If we change the equation of a function, then the graph of the function changes or transforms in predictable ways. This video gives some rules and examples for transformations of functions. To get the most out of this video, it's helpful if you're already familiar with the graph of some typical functions. I call them toolkit functions, like y equals square root of x, y equals x squared, y equals the absolute value of x, and so on. If you're not familiar with those graphs, I encourage you to watch my video called Toolkit Functions first before watching this one. I want to start by reviewing function notation. If g of x represents the function the square root of x, then we can rewrite these expressions in terms of square roots. For example, g of x minus 2 is the same thing as the square root of x minus 2. g of quantity x minus 2 means we plug in x minus 2 everywhere we see an x. So that would be the same thing as the square root of quantity x minus 2. In this second example, I say that we're subtracting 2 on the inside of the function, because we're subtracting 2 before we apply the square root function. Whereas on the first example, I say that the minus 2 is on the outside of the function. We're doing the square root function first and then subtracting 2. In this third example, g of 3x, we're multiplying by 3 on the inside of the function. To evaluate this in terms of square root, we plug in the entire 3x for x in the square root function. That gives us the square root of 3x. In the next example, we're multiplying by 3 on the outside of the function. This is just 3 times the square root of x. Finally, g of minus x means the square root of minus x. This might look a little odd because we're not used to taking the square root of a negative number, but remember that if x itself is negative, like negative 2, then negative x will be negative negative 2 or positive 2. So we'll really be taking the square root of a positive number in that case. Let me record which of these are inside and which of these are outside of my function. In this next set of examples, we're using the same function, g of x is square root of x, but this time we're starting with an expression with square roots in it and trying to write it in terms of g of x. So the first example, the plus 17 is on the outside of my function because I'm taking the square root of x first and then adding 17. So I can write this as g of x plus 17. In the second example, I'm taking x and adding 12 first. Then I take the square root of the whole thing. Since I'm adding the 12 to x first, that's on the inside of my function. So I write that as g of the quantity x plus 12. Remember that this notation means I plug in the entire x plus 12 into the square root sign, which gives me exactly square root of x plus 12. In this next example, I'm doing the square root first and then multiplying by negative 36. So my minus 36 multiplication is outside my function. I can rewrite this as minus 36 times g of x. Finally, in this last example, I take x, multiply by a fourth, and then apply the square root of x. So that's the same thing as g of 1 fourth x. My 1 fourth x is on the inside of my function. In other words, it's inside the parentheses when I use function notation. Let's graph the square root of x and two transformations of this function. y equals the square root of x goes through the points 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2, since the square root of 4 is 2, and looks something like this. In order to graph y equals the square root of x minus 2, notice that the minus 2 is on the outside of the function. That means we're going to take the square root of x first and then subtract 2. So for example, if we start with the x value of 0 and compute the square root of 0, that's 0, then we subtract 2 to give us a y value of negative 2. An x value of 1, which under the square root function had a y value of 1, now has a y value that's decreased by 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And finally, an x value of 4, which under the square root function had a y value of 2, now has a y value of 2 minus 2, or 0. Its y value is also decreased by 2. If I plot these new points, 0 goes with negative 2, 1 goes with negative 1, and 4 goes with 0, I have my transformed graph. 
because I subtracted 2 on the outside of my function, my y values were decreased by 2, which brought my graph down by 2 units. Next, let's look at y equals the square root of quantity x minus 2. Now we're subtracting 2 on the inside of our function, which means we subtract 2 from x first and then take the square root. In order to get the same y value of 0 as we had in our blue graph, we need our x minus 2 to be 0, so we need our original x to be 2. In order to get the y value of 1 that we had in our blue graph, we need to be taking the square root of 1. So we need x minus 2 to be 1, which means that we need to start with an x value of 3. And in order to reproduce our y value of 2 from our original graph, we need the square root of x minus 2 to be 2, which means we need to start out by taking the square root of 4, which means our x minus 2 is 4, so our x should be up there at 6. If I plot my x values with my corresponding y values of square root of x minus 2, I get the following graph. Notice that the graph has moved horizontally to the right by 2 units. To me, moving down by 2 units makes sense because we're subtracting 2, so we're decreasing y's by 2 units. But the minus 2 on the inside, that kind of does the opposite of what I expect. I might expect it to, to move the graph left. I might expect the x values to be going down by 2 units. But instead, it moves the graph to the right. Because the x units have to go up by 2 units in order to get the right square root when I then subtract 2 units again. The observations we made for these transformations of functions hold in general according to the following rules. First of all, numbers on the outside of the function, like in our example y equals the square root of x minus 2, those numbers affect the y values and result in vertical motions, like we saw. These motions are in the direction you expect, so subtracting 2 moves us down by 2. If we were adding 2 instead, that would move us up by 2. Numbers on the inside of the function, that's like our example y equals the square root of quantity x minus 2, those affect the x values and result in a horizontal motion. These motions go in the opposite direction from what you expect. Remember, the minus 2 on the inside actually shifted our graph to the right. If it had, had a plus 2 on the inside, that would actually shift our graph to the left. Adding results in a shift, those are called translations, but multiplying, like something like y equals 3 times the square root of x, that would result in a stretch or shrink. In other words, if I start with the square root of x and then want to graph y equals 3 times the square root of x, that stretches my graph vertically by a factor of 3. Like this. If I want to graph y equals 1 third times the square root of x, that shrinks my graph vertically by a factor of 1 third. Finally, a negative sign results in reflection. For example, if I start with a graph of y equals the square root of x, and then want to graph y equals the square root of negative x, that's going to do a reflection in the horizontal direction, because the negative is on the inside of the square root sign. A reflection in the horizontal direction means a reflection across the y-axis. If instead I want to graph y equals negative the square root of x, that negative sign on the outside means a vertical reflection, a reflection across the x-axis. Pause the video for a moment and see if you can describe what happens in these four transformations. In the first example, we're subtracting 4 on the outside of the function. Adding and subtracting means a translation or shift. And since we're on the outside of the function, it affects the y value, so that's moving us vertically. So this transformation should take the square root of graph and move it down by 4 units. That would look something like this. In the next example, we're adding 12 on the inside. That's still a, a translation, but now we're moving horizontally, and so since we go the opposite direction we expect, we are going to go to the left by 12 units. That's going to look something like this. In the next example, we're multiplying by 3 and introducing a negative sign, both on the outside of our function.
outside our function means we're affecting the y values. So, and multiplication means we're stretching by a factor of three. The negative sign means we reflect in the vertical direction. Here's stretching by a factor of three vertically before I apply the minus sign, and now the minus sign reflects in the vertical direction. Finally, in this last example, we're multiplying by one quarter on the inside of our function. We know that multiplication means stretch or shrink. And since we're on the inside, it's a horizontal motion, and it does the opposite of what we expect. So instead of shrinking by a factor of one fourth horizontally, it's actually going to stretch by the reciprocal, a factor of four horizontally. That'll look something like this. Notice that stretching horizontally by a factor of four looks kind of like shrinking vertically by a factor of one half. And that's actually borne out by the algebra because the square root of one fourth x is the same thing as the square root of one fourth times the square root of x, which is the same thing as one half times the square root of x. And so now we can see algebraically that a vertical shrink by a factor of one half is the same as a horizontal stretch by a factor of four, at least for this function, the square root function. This video gave some rules for transformations of functions, which I'll repeat below. Numbers on the outside correspond to changes in the y values, or vertical motions. Numbers on the inside of the function affect the x values and result in horizontal motions. Adding and subtracting corresponds to translations, or shifts. Multiplying and dividing by numbers corresponds to stretches and shrinks. And putting in a negative sign corresponds to a reflection, a horizontal reflection if the negative sign is on the inside, and a vertical reflection if the negative sign is on the outside. Knowing these basic rules about transformations empowers you to be able to sketch graphs of much more complicated functions, like y equals 3 times the square root of x plus 2, by simply considering the transformations one at a time.